So a lot of people ask, how long does it take for the corrosion to set in? How long does it take after you spill something like Coca-Cola on the board for it to actually stop working properly? And I thought that today would be a great time to figure that out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug the board in. I'm going to have the power supply on. I'm going to turn on my multimeter, and I've soldered the wire to the board, and I've banana clipped it to the ground so that we're going to be able to get an actual real-time reading of the voltage of this power rail as the board is on after pouring Coca-Cola on it. So I think that it will be cool to watch the corrosion occur in real time. So first thing I'm gonna do before I turn the machine on is I'm just gonna take my fresh bottle of Coca-Cola, I have no idea how Jessa drinks this stuff, it is beyond disgusting, into this brand new little dispenser bottle here, and then we're going to dispense it over the ISL6259 chip. Now, for those of you who are wondering, the chip that I'm going to pour this on, I'm going to explain what that circuit is for in just a moment. All right, I think that's enough Coca-Cola. So if we look over here on the schematic in the board view, this is the chip that I'm going to be pouring everything on that you could see right there in the microscope camera. And what this circuit does is it turns the charger voltage, the 18.5 volts from the adapter, into PP bus G3 hot, which is a 12.6 volt power rail. And I have attached my, if you look over here, I have attached the multimeter wire to this output fuse so that we'll be able to monitor the voltage of that in real time as we perform this experiment. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn it on. And as you can see there, we should have a jump to 12.59 volts on PP bus G3 hot. That is the fan spin that you could hear in my microphone. Okay, so now we're going to carefully put some Coca-Cola on that ISL chip. Start with that. That's the Coca-Cola. That's not a lot though, it's just mostly carbonation. I'm just gonna put a few drops. Cause that's what a lot of my customers say. They always say, but I only got a few drops. It was like one drop of liquid. How did that happen? Okay, as you can see, the moment I put the Coca-Cola on, it went up to 17.75 volts. So, <laughs> wow, check that out. So now the ISL chip is not even switching anymore. It's passing through. It's right now the ISL chip is passing direct charger voltage through. So it's no longer even switching. Wow, that took almost no time at all. Let's see if I can get the light up on this. You can really get a good picture. So now we're back to 12.85 volts, which is stable. That's a stable voltage. It's no longer taking the charger voltage and just sending it to the machine. Now you can also see how the capacitor, everything has corroded almost instantly. So check this out. This is not something that took a long time. If you wanna see what a capacitor is supposed to look like on these boards, see right over here how it's nice and silver on both ends. So all these components have that nice silvery look on each end, right? And this one's actually right by the Coca-Cola, but it's not quite touching it yet, but it still has that nice silverish shine on each end. And you can see that very rusty looking. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That junk that's formed, and you can see the green stuff. See the green stuff forming? We're just going to zoom in on that. So the green stuff has already begun to, to form from about one or two drops. And you can see here that the traces on the board are starting to get eaten up. See how this see how this is sticking up further than that? So if I move my, my tweezer, there's kind of a decline over here because this is this copper piece has been eaten away considerably by a very small amount of Coca-Cola. That is all it takes. This is the amount of time it takes for liquid, specifically Coca-Cola to ruin your machine. Okay, three drops. I'm not very accurate with it. So this is what it looks like. I'm not going to show you what it looks like with that, man. Five bucks ain't enough for that. So this is without electricity going through the board. Now I'm going to turn on the power in five, four, three, two, bam. 
and you can see the difference. So that's when I just turned on the power right there, and you can see all the fizzing occurring. So the electricity combined with the Coca-Cola begins that process of fizzing. And this is also why rice is completely useless. So some people have been mentioning rice. Well, the reason that, that rice is useless is that all of this damage occurs. Rice is not going to suck out any of the liquid because it's not directly touching it. But even if you did suck out the liquid, the damage is already done. All of this corrosion has already occurred, has already done a number on all the components. Putting rice there is not going to do anything. Now we're going to do that again. Output is off. There's no power going through right now. And we're going to put a drop of Coca-Cola. All right. This is the Coca-Cola with no electricity. Okay? No electricity, except for whatever was stored in the board and the capacitors. Maybe just a little bit more on this side. This stuff is so gross. So this is no electricity. And I'm going to put on the electricity now. Look at that. Look at what happens when you combine the Coca-Cola with electricity. Absolutely crazy. Wow. We're just going to keep that on for a while. And as you can see, the power supply is not working properly anymore. Uh, that little chip is not doing its job. It's telling that transistor to stay on all the time. And now a circuit that's supposed to be getting 12 volts is getting 17 volts. This is another argument against putting power into a circuit when it has gotten corrosion on it. If you get corrosion on a circuit like this, if you get liquid in it, and you try charging it to see if it's okay, okay, maybe it just needs a charge, maybe it just died, you could be sending 17 volts to a circuit that's expecting 12. You could be, uh, a chip that's supposed to be controlling switching may no longer switch. So this is why it's very important. If you get liquid on any type of electronics, do not put power through it, remove the battery from it, because if you put power through it, you make everything considerably worse. All right, so the sudsing seems to have subsided. There's no more sudsing. You can see that the bubbles are almost not moving at all, and we can zoom in around any of these bubbles and take a look at what they look like. So that was only at 7x. I'm going to try zooming in on some of these bubbles at 20x so you can see what they look like. Now we're going to go zoom in at closer to 45x. You can kind of see them moving in this up the exposure to a Viceland TV contract level of exposure there, so you can see. So that's 45x. That's as far as this microscope will zoom in. Check that out. I'm going to take a Q-tip, and let's see what it looks like under there. Ready? Okay, by the way, look at the color of the Q-tip. The Coca-Cola is brown, but the Q-tip is black. That is burned. That is straight up burned. Okay, I'm going to stop putting power through the circuit right now. And let's zoom in on it and take a look at what the carnage looks like. This was a once perfectly clean board. It, we've had about 20, 22 minutes of Coca-Cola on it and destroyed. So this used to be a conductive path, and this conductive path is actually gone. The copper has been entirely eaten away. So remember this? Remember this one that I said in the beginning started to move? Started to, like... Uh, look at this. There's no copper left in that point in that probe pad. You can see the green stuff growing down here. I'm just going to scrape that off a little bit. That is what Coca-Cola will do to a board. If you say that you only got one drop on it, well, 
that's what one drop will do. If you say that the drink was only there for a few seconds, that's what only a few seconds will do. It doesn't take much time, depending on the type of drink you spill, for it to completely burn and destroy and eat away at your board and all the components on it. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.